DNA splicing and gene editing aside, there are so many hybrid animals in the world and some of these guys will really surprise you. I'm sure we have all at this point seen videos of this animal all over the internet. This guy is a zonkey, a cross between a zebra and donkey. Donkeys and zebras are closely related and belong to the same family as horses. Zonkeys are sterile, meaning they are unable to produce offspring of their own. However, unlike most hybrids, they are capable of living in the wild due to the fact that zebras and donkeys range in close proximity to another. However, this is rare. Most zonkeys are found in zoos, bred as a tourist attraction. Zonkeys live around 15 to 25 years, which is relatively long for a hybrid. Weighing anywhere from 500 to 700 pounds, zonkeys are similar in size to their parents, however they look more donkey in appearance. Beside their iconic zebra stripes on their fur, they are either tan, brown, or gray. They are usually lighter on the underside, which is where their zebra stripes are more pronounced. They have a long black mane extending to the tip of its tail and a large head and ears similar to a donkey. This next hybrid is one of the stranger ones. Narluga, a hybrid animal with narwhal and beluga whale genetics. This entry is much more rare with very little evidence of its existence, with the skull found in Greenland being the only evidence to be studied. With the skull came conclusions, left with more mysteries. Scientists came to a conclusion that some unusual crosshat traits in its skull between its mother and father, and this may have given it unique abilities. Narwhals have one big tooth that protrudes spiraling forward and another that remains in its jaw, as well as small, non-important vestigial teeth. Beluga whales, on contrast, have 34 teeth spread relatively evenly through their jaw. This narluga skull came with 18 teeth and a space for what scientists think may be two more spiral teeth, one facing forward, one back. Keeping in theme of aquatic mammals, we have the Wolfin. Wolfins are somewhat of a miracle and a tragic story at the same time. They are a cross between a bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. A false killer whale, despite its name, is actually a species of dolphin, being the third largest species in the world. The first wolfin was born in a Tokyo sea world in 1981, passing away after 200 days. In 1985, a female wolfin was born in an unplanned union between a false killer whale and Atlantic bottlenose dolphin, this one living for much longer. Wolfin occurrences are still extremely rare, only happening in captivity. However, bottlenose dolphins and false killer whales often interact positively in the wild, socializing and foraging together. It is assumed that a healthy wolfin has a lifespan of about 40 years and grow to about a size of 12 to 20 feet. That size is around the medium of both parents. Common bottlenose dolphins reach 6.5 feet and a false killer whale being 16.4 feet long. Another distinct characteristic is its 66 teeth compared to the bottlenose 88 and 44 from the false killer whale. Back on land, similar to the well-known liger, we have the tigon. Tigon is an animal that is half male tiger, half female lion. It is the result of breeding in zoos. They have visible features from both parents, including spots from a lion and stripes from the tiger and could have a small mane which is mainly scruff. Tigons carry growth inhibitors, meaning they cannot grow beyond the size of their parents and are usually smaller than a lion. The average tigon measures between 4 to 9 feet long and weighs around 200 to 350 pounds. Tigers and lions do not occupy the same type of land in the wild, making this animal extremely rare, only being bred in zoos as an attraction for visitors. There is no scientific benefit to these animals, and furthermore, most die in infancy or grow up with neurological damage, cancers, and a heavily diminished lifespan. Those who do live a long life can only expect to see four zoo walls and people glaring at an unnatural spectacle. Keeping with the cats, another hybrid lion is the jag lion. Jag lions are a very unlikely story, and as its name hints, it is a cross between the jaguar and a lion. This instance takes place in Barrie, Ontario at Bear Creek Wildlife Sanctuary where a male black jaguar and lioness made it creating two cubs, one male, one female. And as far as research goes, the only two ever recorded other than lesser known instances. According to the sanctuary, there were no intentions of the pair mating, with every precaution being taken to avoid such a situation, making this a natural occurrence for two captive animals kept in close proximity. 
In the wild, jaguars mainly occupy lowland tropical rainforests and lions mainly occupy grassy plains of sub-Saharan Africa. Their territories do not overlap, therefore there would be little to no wild encounters between the two animals. Jag lions resemble both parents with a mix of rosettes from the jaguar and robust body and large stature of a lion. Koi wolf. Its name suggests that it would be a cross between a coyote and a wolf. Eastern coyotes in fact aren't true coyotes at all, but are a variant of koi wolf. Emerging within the last century, their population has exploded over most of eastern North America, mainly due to deforestation and the destruction of their habitats. The first recording of a koi wolf happened in 1919 in Ontario, Canada. Scientists are now finding this animal's DNA as far south as Virginia. Koi wolves are about 55 pounds heavier than regular coyotes with longer legs, stronger jaws, and smaller ears. Koi wolves, like coyotes, wolves, and dogs, are very close on the evolutionary tree, meaning koi wolves can breed with wolves and dogs. Another canine hybrid is the wolf dog. Wolf dogs are similar to koi wolves, however, they are a result of intentional breeding. They are a cross between wolves and dogs. Yes, domestic dogs. They are bred as exotic pets to be sold off as prize animals. Today, wolf dogs have been bred so much that it usually doesn't involve a pure wolf parent. Instead, they are bred with dogs or other wolf dogs. Both dogs and wolves share an evolutionary past, making them similar both in physicality and behavior. This also makes them infertile, meaning they can have offspring, and their offspring can have offspring. They have a similar lifespan of our domestic dogs, averaging 12 to 14 years. Their size varies, however, tends to lean more to the size of large dogs. Wolf dogs are not as docile as domestic dogs. They retain territorial traits from wolves and are also incredibly weary of humans. Wolf dogs also are incredibly shy animals and get stressed easily when put in new situations or environment. This animal, I'm sure you can take a guess of what it's called. The reason for its existence seems obvious. This animal is called a beefalo. It is a hybrid between an American bison and domestic cattle developed in the United States during the early 1970s. Beefalo isn't the first of its kind. Previously, there was the cattalo. However, this animal experienced poor fertility. Today, there is conversation of bringing beefalo to a higher range of consumers to meet the demand of humane, all-natural, antibiotic-free, and hormone-free meat. Beefalo is claimed to be 40% less the cost of regular cattle, as well as better on the environment. Beefalo are also easier to raise, do not rely on heavy grains nor special finishing rations. Beefalo meat is lower in fat and cholesterol while being higher in protein than regular beef. Beefalo is also backed by the USDA. All of this allowing beefalo to meet classifications such as grass-fed, all-natural, or organic beef. During taste tests, the beefalo has been said to be juicier, softer, and tastier than regular beef or bison. Beefalo tend to have a larger frame and defined muscles similar to bison. They are very docile animals. Beefalo also have a very dense coat made of tiny hairs, allowing them to thrive in colder climates, which is a trait favored by farmers. Beefalo calves are born small, but grow really fast, allowing them to go to market sooner. Most beefalo begin their journey to the consumer at two and a half years old. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, Subscribe to the channel, it will really help me out and show your support. And leave any comments of your opinions on any of the animals we talked about in this video today. Thank you for watching, I'll see you guys later.